everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to start a series on reading crochet patterns. I get this question so often and I wanted to start a little series on information that you guys could use in order to read crochet patterns. Stay tuned to the end of the video for my tip of the day. But today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about crochet terminology. That's what this video is going to focus on. I'm also going to do a video on gauge and then I'll do a video where I take a free pattern. Um, I got to make sure that my copyright is good for all this stuff, but um, I'm going to take a free pattern that you might get at the store and I'm going to work through and show you all the steps on how to do that pattern using that as an example. I'm going to do that because when you purchase patterns from someone like me or an Etsy seller or somebody that's like your friend that wrote a pattern, sometimes the the terminology isn't different but sometimes the way they organize it and trying to make it easy for beginners to follow is a little bit different than what you might find at the store. So I'm going to utilize a free pattern like that come on one of those skeins of yarn and I'm going to just like work through it and show you exactly how you would follow that pattern in order to create your own project. But for today I'm going to focus on terminology because that I think is the biggest hiccup when you are going to read the patterns is you don't necessarily know what they mean when they're using the abbreviations. So I'm going to have all the information underneath the video in the description box and also I'll have a link to my blog melaniekham.com and you can click over there and I'll have a free printable that you could print it out and have it as like a little cheat sheet um, or all the information will be written out underneath the video. So I'm going to kind of say the term, do a brief um, description of it and then I will show you with some yarn. I'll cut to a shot of some yarn kind of showing you what it is. I'm not going to linger too long on those so if you need to see them again you can rewind it and look at it again otherwise this video will be way too long. Um, so I'm just going to kind of quickly show you just so you have a visual idea of what it is that I'm talking about. So some of the main things that you're going to be learning are the abbreviations for different stitches. So the first thing that you're going to notice is chain. So like on your foundation chain the abbreviation for that is CH and um, I'll show you right here that is like doing your foundation chain. The abbreviation is CH and a lot of times it'll tell you the number CH and that's how many chains you need to do. Another one is slip stitch um, and that abbreviation is SLST. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook. A lot of times you use slip stitches when you are connecting around, like when you're crocheting in the round when you're going to connect that first round or when you're finishing something off. Okay, another basic crochet stitch, the single crochet, that's abbreviated as SC, so single crochet. Um, it'll tell you how many single crochets you're supposed to do, so we'll have the number and it'll be SC. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. Then we have the half double crochet which is my personal favorite. I love that stitch. I just think it's a beautiful stitch and it's a quick one. Um, half double crochet is H D C so half double crochet. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three of the loops on your hook. The next stitch is double crochet and that's D, C. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, then you're going to yarn over and pull through the remaining loops. So if you're just learning, feel free to watch this video along with the um, instructions that I have written out under the video or that cheat sheet and uh, memorize these. So that way when you're reading patterns you know what they're talking about. Another one is the treble crochet and that is TR. Treble crochet is not as widely used as double, half double, and single crochet, but it is a fairly common stitch so it's good to know it. Yarn over your hook two times, then insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. There should be four loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops only, then yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over, pull through the two remaining loops. Some of these abbreviations are kind of self-explanatory, but I'm still going to go over them just in case. Um, so you might see beginning BEG, you know, it'll be abbreviated as BEG. It's pretty much these crochet patterns are basically like a ton of abbreviations all in one thing. So it kind of looks like a different language when you're first looking at it, but really it's all just abbreviations. 
decrease is a DEC. Um, that's when you're kind of like taking more stitches and condensing them down. When you're doing a ripple blanket, like the chevron kind of looking stitch, um, that utilizes the decrease a lot. And also increase, so INC, um, increasing when you're like crocheting in the round and you're increasing your stitches in each row, uh, then that'll be increase, which is INC. Another one is remaining. You might see that, remaining, which would be REM, or repeat, which would be REP. So some of those are pretty self-explanatory. Explanatory. Uh, round, like if you're crocheting in the round, round will be abbreviated as RND. So round, RND. If you see something that says SC2, the number two, and then TOG. So that's single crochet, two together. So that means you're single crocheting two stitches together, which is also a decrease. If that makes sense. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. Then you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch over, yarn over, pull through that one, and then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And stitches is abbreviated as ST, sometimes STS. So one thing you might notice is a uh, bracket or an asterisk. And a lot of times that's telling you what you're supposed to be repeating. Okay, so if you have something in a bracket and it will say repeat it three times, then what's in the bracket, those directions are what you are supposed to repeat then three times to finish out your row. Sometimes it'll have an asterisk too, and then the instructions inside those asterisks are then what you're supposed to repeat. So if inside the asterisk it has a direction and it says repeat two times, that means it's going to be a total of three times that you completed those instructions. Does that make sense? Also, people will put this stitch count in parentheses at the end of the row. So this is what I do in my beanie patterns. Um, I'll tell you the number of stitches that you're supposed to have at the end of that round. It's a good way to check yourself and make sure that you've not made any mistakes along the way. So that's it for this video. Some crochet terminology, um, some easy ways for you to kind of get the hang of it for reading crochet patterns in, in the long run here. So the next video, I'm gonna talk about gauge. Um, Gauge is a really tricky thing, and so I'm going to dedicate a whole video on to gauge, how you can check your gauge, and then ways to modify your gauge compared to what the pattern is asking you for. So I'll be doing that in the next video, and then in the third video I'll do like an actual example, and we'll kind of go through one together. So, don't forget, if you are a new crocheter, you can totally do this. This is not, you know, anything that you cannot do. It just takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of understanding what the pattern is asking for. It takes the, you know, a little bit of focus and determination to make sure that you practice and just uh, get that muscle memory down. So have no fear. Um, these are just basic crochet terminology. This is nothing crazy, okay? So this is all really basic stuff. Don't forget to check out the cheat sheet over on my blog or everything will be written out under the video here as well. So my tip for today is when you are crocheting a project, and you're using your skein of yarn and it tells you the recommended hook size. I always say that you can go down one hook size or up one hook size and that will still work for that type of yarn. I tend to go up hook size. I like things to work up a little bit faster, but that's where gauge is going to kind of come into play. So I'll talk about that some more, but if you're just crocheting a blanket and you feel like one hook is not really working out for you or you don't have that hook, try going up one hook size or down one hook size from the recommended, uh, what it says on the skein of yarn. All right, thanks so much for watching. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want me to cover anything specifically about reading crochet patterns. Please leave me a comment below so that I be sure to include that in future videos. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and share this video with any of your crochet friends. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.